In 1989, I was a kid who was obsessed with two things. Number one, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. From the Saturday morning cartoon, to the incredible action figure line, and the massive assortment of cool memorabilia, I loved everything about those heroes in a half shell. My second obsession was the Nintendo Entertainment System. I spent countless hours mashing those little red buttons, hoping to collect tons of coins and defeat all of the bosses. Some of my fondest memories revolve around this incredible 8-bit console. Today I'm going to combine these two things that I loved as a kid into an art piece that tells the story about my childhood rivalry with a man named Mike Tyson. Specifically, the 8-bit version of Mike Tyson. You see, the very first Nintendo game that I owned was Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. It was a boxing game in which you played an up-and-coming fighter named Little Mac. The goal was to fight your way up the ranks by taking on increasingly difficult boxers and ultimately, you could become the world champion by defeating Mike Tyson. Now, for the most part, this game was fairly straightforward. It was heavily based on memorizing each opponent's sequence of moves and knowing when to throw your punches. I was able to make my way through the game by defeating boxers like King Hippo, Bald Bull, and Soda Popinski. But when it came to Kid Dynamite himself, Mike Tyson, I didn't stand a chance. Literally seconds after stepping into the ring with him, he would knock me down. I'd get back up and he'd knock me down again. And eventually, he'd hit me with the dreaded TKO. To add insult to injury, he would taunt me by flexing his biceps and winking at me. It made me furious. This failure screen had been seared into my memory, and after months of failed attempts, I was on the verge of giving up. That is, until I heard about the Nintendo Power Glove. This mysterious device began appearing in eye-catching magazine advertisements and TV commercials. It also made a cameo appearance in the movie The Wizard, and by that point, every 8-bit gamer was talking about this magical glove. Basically, it was a wearable controller that would allow you to interact with your Nintendo games by making various gestures and movements with your hand. I was convinced that this glove was the secret weapon that I needed to finally defeat Mike Tyson. So I begged my parents to get me one, and in December of 1989, my wish came true. You can see the excitement on my face. This looks like a kid who thinks he's about to become the heavyweight champion of the world by using this glove. Now to complete the rest of this story, I'm going to build an action figure diorama that demonstrates what I experienced when I used the power glove to play Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. To bring my idea to life, I'll be using these one-quarter scale Ninja Turtles action figures made by NECA Toys. These are easily some of my favorite figures of all time, I've taken many fun and nostalgic photos with them over the years, and I plan to use them in many more projects in the future. Since the centerpiece of this project will be the Power Glove, I'll need to build a custom miniature version of it for these Ninja Turtles. And if you're a turtle fan, one thing you'll know is that they have three fingers on each hand, so this is going to be a three-fingered Power Glove. My approach to building this glove was to first make a duplicate copy of the hand, which is fairly easy to do with a 3D scanner. For this particular hand, I wanted the fingers to be spaced apart slightly more than they are on the original hand. So after I did the scan, I made some minor modifications to the 3D model before sending it over to my 3D printer. Fortunately, I didn't really have to spend too much time putting detail into the paint job because most of the hand is going to be covered by the glove. You'll only really be able to see the fingertips. I then used some epoxy putty to sculpt the glove around the hand. This is an air dry putty, so it'll harden after being left out for a few hours. And afterwards, you can paint it whatever color you want. For the portion of the glove with all those cool little buttons on it, I thought the easiest thing to do would be to capture a 3D scan of it and then 3D print it. I applied some acrylic paint onto all of those little buttons and then used a little bit of glue to attach the pieces together to complete my custom three-fingered power glove which fits right onto my action figure's arm. Now, one of the things that I enjoy most about building dioramas is coming up with all of those little background details. 
In this case, I'm using an assortment of one quarter scale props. Some of these are 3D printed, and some of them are made out of materials like paper and foam board. You can see here I've got a selection of NES games from this time period, classics like Mega Man 2, Ninja Gaiden, and of course Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, complete with dust covers for the cartridges. I've also got a few posters, I actually had some of these on my bedroom wall as a kid, so I had to include them for nostalgia's sake. And of course I've got several copies of Nintendo Power, which was my favorite magazine to read when I was young. They contained all kinds of tips and cheat codes for every popular game on the Nintendo console. I still enjoy going back and reading some of these old issues from time to time. And for one final blast of nostalgia, I also included these Nintendo Game Pack cards. I used to collect them as a kid, and each pack contained some scratch-off cards and stickers based on characters from various Nintendo games, including Punch-Out! So I scanned these into my computer and printed them out in miniature form. With all of the background props now finished, the only thing remaining is to build the framework for the diorama. So I took a trip to my local dollar store, which is one of my favorite places to get supplies, and I picked up some foam board sheets to use for the floor and the walls. I laid them down on my table, and after printing out a backdrop, I began gluing. With the framework done, we can finally start arranging all of the props into the diorama. This process is very nostalgic for me. I get to relive a lot of those memories that I had as a kid. Uh, it's crazy to think that this time period in my life was well over 30 years ago. I know I'm getting old, but the fact that I get to work on projects like this keeps me feeling young. We can now place the figures inside and move on to the final phase, capturing and editing the photo. I'm currently using my trusty Panasonic GH3. It's an old camera, but it still works well for me after all of these years. I did some basic editing to adjust the colors and clean things up for the final photo, but before I reveal it to you, we still need to finish the story that I started in the beginning. What happened when I finally acquired the Power Glove and used it against Mike Tyson? Well, after just a few minutes of trying to use this thing, I quickly realized that it was actually much harder to play the game with the glove than with the standard controller, and I got knocked out even faster than I had before. This glove was terrible. I actually gave up and stopped playing the game for many years. But later on in life, as an adult, I returned and gave it another shot. I trained hard. I studied all of Mike Tyson's moves, and eventually, I managed to defeat him without the power glove. This was an incredibly satisfying feeling and well worth the many years of pain and suffering. So here's the finished art piece that captures my experience using the power glove against Mike Tyson. In the photo, you can sense the frustration that Donatello is experiencing with this awful piece of technology. Leave a comment and let me know what other kinds of characters, games, TV shows, or movies you'd like to see me cover. And in the meantime, check out my work on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.